Good evening, PCSD parents and staff, and to any of our students who may be watching. Thank you for joining me this evening for our very first virtual parent teacher fellowship. I trust that all of you are comfortable where you are and prepared to engage with us tonight. To quiet our spirits and focus our hearts, please join me in prayer. Dear Father, we recognize you tonight. Uh, we praise and exalt you as our um, protector and provider. Protector because you have given us good health, physically and emotionally. Uh, and we continue to reap the benefits of this. Uh, and our provider because you have allowed us to experience the joy of family and uh, blessings that enable us to provide for continuity of learning even during these trying times. Um, thank you, dear Father, for being this and more for us. Uh, may uh, the words uh, that we use and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Uh, dear Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, please turn your attention now. Okay, this is the main portion of our, uh, always of our parent teacher fellowships. So turn your attention now to your screens as our supervisors announce and recognize our students' remarkable first quarter achievements for school year 2020 2021. Good evening. Here are the things that the Pioneer students accomplished in the first quarter. They mastered eight letter sounds, finished two paces in math, English, social studies, science, and word building, learned the eight basic colors, learned how to count from zero to 22, learned the four seasons, and recited Psalm 100. Congratulations, pioneers, for doing a great job last quarter. Let's learn more in this quarter. Good day. I'm Miss Leia de Ocampo, and I'm here to present to you the first quarter accomplishments of the Pilgrims Learning Center. Pilgrims first quarter report. Accomplishments. Mastered 15 letters and sounds. Blended sounds into words. Learned how to write 15 letters. Recited 15 Bible verses completed 169 paces. Congratulations, Natalia B. Abad, Justin Killian Cruz, Hey and Margaret G. De Los Reyes, Cassandra Chloe O. Diwa, Alexander Carl S. Guliman, Elohim ICD B. Javier, Cole Caden M. Hustiniani, Benjamin T. Diu, Ethan Gabriel L. Cibalo, Alexa May O. Sidon. Congratulations! You did a great job! Thank you! Our first quarter for this school year has just ended, and our trailblazers finished with great achievements. It's my pleasure and honor to report to you our students' accomplishments. For this quarter, we have 100% honor roll. Congratulations, Trailblazers. For Trailblazers 1, they all have honor A status. Ms. Anela Sofia Dacoy, Ms. Dorothy Cassandra Gilonga, Ms. Ina Kagitingan Casanova, Ms. Eliana Duenas, Ms. Cassandra Pauline Lopez. Mr. Luan Rafael Prado, Mr. Fons Arton Casho, Ms. Eliana Pinelli Kaya, Ms. Sophie Alcantara, Mr. Prince Jairus Bernaldez, and Mr. Lemuel Abad. For Trailblazers 2, congratulations, Ms. Parisa Isla Calupas, Ms. Ava Miyara Bautista. Ms. Emma Angeline Reyes, Ms. Shella Todd, 
Miss Kristen May Sakili, Miss Ashlyn Claire Galliano, Miss Patrice Adeline Cassidy Saw, Miss Daniel Renee Rios, Miss Sabine Moira Roque, Mr. Jason Nigel Yavut, for all of you achieved an Honor A status. And congratulations, Mr. Alexander Matthew Carvajal, for achieving an Honor B status. For our highest pace average, we have Ms. Ina Kagitingan I Casanova with 100% pace average. For highest general average from Trailblazers 1, Ms. Ina Kagitingan I Casanova with 99.76% general average. From Trailblazers 2, highest general average, Miss Emma Angeline B. Reyes with 99.73%. She also has the most number of 100s with 33 perfect scores. Most paces completed from Trailblazers 1, we have Mr. Prince Jaira P. Bernales with 37, 37 paces accomplished. From Trailblazers 2, we have Ms. Parisa Isla G. Calupas with 36 pieces accomplished. Congratulations, Trailblazers, and to our proud parents. Good job, everybody. Good day, parents. I'm glad to present to you the report of achievements of the Overcomers Remote Learning Center last quarter. Honor A, these are the students who have attained a general average of 95 to 100 percent while maintaining the academic balance. Congratulations for making it to Honor A. Mr. Zoriel Abad, Ms. Aira Prado, Ms. Brian Manhilot, Mr. Mark De Los Reyes, Ms. Eva Juliano, Mr. Jacob Yabot, Mr. Caleb Mina. Ms. Ilea Durunila, Ms. Hannah Samson, Mr. Johan Alvaran, Mr. Philip Hasso, Mr. Moses Nang, Mr. Miguel Makatangay, Ms. Christine Buduan, Ms. Adriana Hernandez. Overcomers highest pace average with 99%, Mr. Johan Adriel L. Alvaran. Overcomers 1, highest general average with 97.75%, Mr. Caleb Daniel L. Mina. Overcomers 2, highest general average with 99.07%, Mr. Johan Adriel L. Alvaran. Overcomers most number of 100, 16 100s. Mr. Johan Idrel L. Alvaran. Overcomers 1, most paces completed, 26 paces. Mr. Caleb Daniel L. Mina. Overcomers, most paces completed, 23 paces. Mr. Philip Cesar D. Hasso. Let us continue to encourage and support our children. Good day and God bless. It is my privilege and honor to present to you the honorable students from the Achievers Learning Center. Honor A, students have achieved a total grade average of 95 to 100 percent while maintaining academic balance are the following students. Mr. Yarek Malyari, Ms. Vincent Cayugan, Mr. Luis Miguel C. Seta, Mr. Lance Gerald Prado, Mr. Jeremy Christian Dinglesan, Ms. Francine Garcia. Ms. Clem and Andrea Pedregosa, Ms. Anaya Reyes, Ms. Jusril Han Dequel, Mr. Glenn Cyrus Hassel, Mr. Ethan Daniel Tyler So, Mr. Rafael Timothy John Vasquez. And for Honor B, students have attained a total grade average of 90 to 94% while maintaining academic balance are the following students. Ms. Haley De Los Reyes, Ms. Kyla Hidalgo, Ms. Phoebe Casio, Mr. John Derek Dimolanta, 
Mr. John Daniel Romoneda, Mr. Derek James de la Cruz, Mr. Bernard Guevara, and Mr. Yeshua Isaac Cabiet. For the highest space average with an average of 100%, Mr. Luis Miguel C. Zeta. Or the highest general average from the Achievers One with an average of 97.09%, Ms. Clement Andrea Pedregosa. For Achievers Two with an average of 99.55%, Mr. Luis Miguel C. Zeta. For the most number of hundreds with 26 spaces completed, Mr. Luis Miguel C. Zeta. And for the most spaces completed with 26 spaces completed, Mr. Luis Miguel C. Zeta. And that's all for the Achievers Learning Center. Congratulations, my dear Achievers. Good evening, parents. It is my privilege to give you a report from the Conqueror's Learning Center. For our first quarter honor roll, honor A, these are the students who have attained a general average of 95 to 100 percent while having the academic balance. The following students are Mr. Jan Aixan Theodore Flores, Ms. Alana Lelaine Sorolia, Ms. Sofia Isabel Pedregosa, Ms. Anime Espejon, Mr. Jaron Calvin Deo Cruz. Mr. Juan Carlos Salao, Mr. Jasper Parayao, Mr. Abram Jared Garcia, Mr. Magnus Michael Romero, Ms. Paula Trono, Mr. Edward Lindon Figueredo, Ms. Beatriz Victoria Villaflor, Mr. Edward Limuel Figueredo, Mr. Guillen Emilio Ceballo, Mr. Joseph Adel Abayari, Mr. Gavrilo Salvador, Ms. Zoe Alexa Croox, Mr. Chris Ian Pelayo, Mr. Paulo Gabriel Domingo, Mr. Inigo Rafael De Leon, and Mr. Jacob Vincent Todd. For our Honor B, these are the students who have attained a general average of 90 to 94 percent while maintaining the academic balance. The following students are Mr. L. Nathan Abad, Ms. Bianca Ceris Astom, Ms. Lyra Francesca Favorial, Ms. Leslie Ann Gashas, Ms. Ayana Lynn Dalugdug, Mr. Jack Matthew Nang. For our highest pace average with 98%, congratulations, Mr. Guillen Emilio Ceballo. For our Congress 1 highest general average with 97.12%, congratulations, Mr. Gavrilo Salvador. For our Congress 2, Highest general average with 97.02%. Congratulations, Ms. Beatriz Victoria Villaflor. For our Congress 3 highest general average with 97.45%, Mr. Guillen Emilio Ceballo. And for our Congress 4 highest general average with 97.75%, Mr. L Edward Limuel Figueredo. For the most number of 100s, we have 10 100s. Congratulations, Mr. Guillen Emilio Ceballo. And for the most paces completed, we have 20 paces. Congratulations, Mr. L. Nathan Abad. Mr. Chris Ian Pelayo and Mr. Guillen Emilio Ceballo. Congratulations once again, conquerors. We will continue to give you better service so you can be what God wants you to be for His glory. God bless.
Good day. It is an honor to present to you the senior high school students who have successfully completed the PACE requirements and passed all the lecture classes. For grade 11, we have Mr. Sam Ko, Badox Bakwell, Yana Maliari, Sophie Roque, Gabriel So, and for grade 12, we have Mr. Matthew Almagro, Mr. Shayan Gonzalez, Ms. Daniel Joy Garcia, Ms. Jillian Nang, Ms. Kenisha Pedro, Mr. Jacob Astom, and Ms. Ashley Ramos. Congratulations. Good evening again to the PCSD family. Congratulations for all of the first quarter achievements of our students during this most interesting and very unusual school year. Permit me now to talk with you about something which I hope will encourage and even excite us as we together navigate our children's learning through the rest of the school year. The education sector has stressed over and over again the importance of constant, accurate, and current information amidst the changes that are currently taking place at all levels of education in our nation. As principal of PCSD, I believe it is one of my primary responsibilities to communicate with you, our dear parents, the principles and concepts that we have gleaned from resource persons in the field of education that will better uh, foster an understanding of what we do here at PCSD, why the staff do them, and why we encourage our students and now our parents to follow and practice them. Most of the material I am going to share with you this evening come from the School of Tomorrow Educators Convention session of Mrs. Maria Mimosa Pranza, consultant for the Executive and Support Services Department of School of Tomorrow Philippines. In her session, Mrs. Pranza mentioned that in the survey conducted by the Department of Education before the opening of the current school year, 8.9 million parents chose modular distance learning as the primary mode of learning delivery that they prefer for their children. This is understandable given the inconsistent and sometimes the non-existent internet connectivity in many parts of our country. However, many of us are also aware of the many weaknesses and challenges of modular learning, especially in the public school system. PCSD has always used modules as the means of learning in basic education's major academic disciplines. Of course, we call our modules PACES. What has changed is the way that we affirm and assess each child's learning. Instead of face-to-face -face in our learning centers, we utilize online platforms at present. A PACE is a self-instructional module whose goal is learning, not teaching. The focus is on the individual and the audience is one child and not a class. The PACE is student-driven, not teacher-driven, and it is designed specifically for the student. It stands on its own and always moves from the known to the unknown. The elements I just mentioned are interwoven in the design of the pace. If you scan through a pace, in fact, if you have a pace available right now, go through it and you will notice, uh, you will notice these features. First, we have the goals my goals or the objective page. This is a preview of concepts to be studied in the PACE, providing the outline. This summarizes the test content and is an effective review tool. And then comes the vocabulary words. These are based on an internationally accepted reading list and thus keeps true to a child's grade level and also serves to enhance reading and spelling vocabulary. Another feature is the teaching strip, which briefly discusses specific elements for more detailed study for the student's confidence and guidance 
making learning less overwhelming and less confusing, and also serves as a more detailed review tool. Then there are the examples that always move from simple to complex concepts and anticipate the questions that the students may have. It also gives the students more independence for self-learning. Another feature is the score strip. This provides a safety net by giving immediate feedback, thus preventing the student from proceeding without understanding and mastery. There's also the supervisor score strip that aids the supervisor in scoring and checking abstract concepts and gives immediate feedback to the student. Of course, we have the checkup. The checkups in a pace are a formative assessment that filters student learning, focusing on the most important aspects of the learned material and prevents the student from proceeding without mastery. By the way, formative assessments are like self-checks and they're not recorded as part of the grade. The self-test is another formative assessment of the student's mastery of the entire PACE content. It demonstrates to the supervisor a student's readiness to take the PACE test and provides confidence to the student as it reveals his readiness to test. The PACE test is a summative assessment that demonstrates, evaluates, and verifies mastery. The score on the PACE test is recorded onto the progress report card. Indeed, the design of the PACE is truly ideal for modular distance learning. But the PACE is just the PACE. It is an excellent tool, but still just a tool for learning. There are two key factors that make the PACES deliver self-directed independent learning and mastery as they are designed to do. And these two key factors are what I would like to, fo to focus on with you this evening. Two key factors. What are they? Number one. No shortcuts. The student should interact with each feature of the pace. This means he should read through his goals. For lower level students, these goals are required to be read out loud to the supervisor every time that a pace is issued. For higher level students, they are told to read before proceeding with the rest of the pace. A student needs to scan through the PACE content, including the checkups and the self-test. He is to read, understand, and even write the vocabulary words in each section. Take the time to read and understand each teaching strip or box every time a new concept is introduced. He is to read through the material for understanding, not just for answers, and sometimes, he has to read through, not just once, but twice or even more. He's also to study each example and follow it as he does the activities that come after. He is to score honestly, accurately, and orderly. He is to review before each checkup and self-test. This procedure ensures mastery. When followed consistently, this develops the student into an independent learner, able to learn new concepts on his own. Parents, please do check that your child does not shortcut the procedure. Giving them the answers to questions in the pace does not develop learning or teach mastery. If we want our children to be able to learn on their own, we need to equip them now by encouraging and requiring them to follow PACE procedure. More importantly, please understand that providing clues or prompting a student 
for him to get the correct answer to a test question will probably get him a higher grade on the PACE test, but it will never develop self-learning and mastery. And neither will this improve positive character and may even result in confusing his value system. So that's the first factor, no shortcuts. Second, adequate or superior reading skills. Reading, including all that one can do with the text, observe it, understand it, evaluate it, appropriate it, and express it, is foundational to any student becoming an independent learner. Reading is the doorway to learning. This is why we start by equipping our four-year-olds with the necessary skills to be ready to learn to read. And then we teach them to read by using the literature and the developmental approach with the long-term goal that they would always love to read. And then all throughout basic education, motivate them to learn by reading and interacting with their material. So just how well do our students read? Good question. The Program for International Student Assessment, or PISA, P-I-S-A, implemented by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD, assesses the ability of students in applying knowledge they gain to everyday situations. The Philippines Department of Education participated in the 2018 cycle of PISA, where English reading literacy, the capacity of the student to understand, use, evaluate, reflect on, and engage with texts, was tested as a major domain, while the mathematical and scientific literacy portions were considered as minor domains. The test was taken by Filipino students aged 15 years old and above from both the public and private schools. What are the results? For Filipino students, overall reading literacy is 390 points for students from private schools and 328 points from private schools. Both of these scores fall well below the OECD average, which is 487 points. Looking further into the data, only 19.4 of these students obtained the minimum of reading proficiency level two. The remaining 80% of students who tested obtained a level one reading proficiency. This means that a majority of Filipino students aged 15 and above can only evaluate the literal meaning of simple sentences. They cannot identify the main idea in a text of moderate length. They have difficulty in making comparisons within the texts and in making connections between the text and outside knowledge. And they cannot represent the literal meaning of simple or multiple texts without explicit content or organizational clues. But please take note that SOTP schools like PCST did not participate in the 2018 PISA test. However, School of Tomorrow schools, including PCST, took the Center for Educational Measurement reading test last February 2020. For grades 7 and 8, reading proficiency level 3 for those classified as expert readers was administered. Reading proficiency level three. What were our results? For grade seven students last school year, 
the mean score of 557 points obtained by students from SOTP schools is higher than that of the norm group which was recorded at 500. That means our schools were higher by 57 points. Also, I am very pleased and very, very proud to announce that two of the top scores for this group were obtained by two of our students. Mr. Edward Lindon Figarido obtained a percentile rank of 99% and the top scorer of 99 plus percent was obtained by Mr. Magnus Michael Romero. Congratulations, boys. For grade eight, the mean score of 556 is again higher by 56 points than that of the norm group at this level, which stayed at 500. The top score of 99 plus percent was posted by a female student from our home school. However, two PCSD students again were among those who obtained top scores of 99% for grade 8 students. These are Mr. Angel Ace de Malanta and Ms. Katrina Yance. Quality index of our top scorers are in the excellent category. Again, this is Reading Level Proficiency 3. Classified as expert readers with subtests in scanning, vocabulary, points of view, comprehension, and study aids. Our Year 5 students who took the Level 2 reading test obtained quality indexes ranging from average to superior, while our Year 4 students who took the level one reading test obtained quality indexes in the same range, average to superior. Great results. What does this all mean? The data obtained from the CEM reading test validates the reading literacy of our students that have been acquired over time as we have consistently applied the non-negotiables of the PACE procedures. More specifically, this means that our learners know where to go for information. They do not panic when they encounter information they do not understand at first reading. They do what it takes to figure things out on their own, and our students just test better. Remember, taking no shortcuts in the PACE procedures and encouraging reading and engaging with text equals mastery and self-directed lifelong learning. Remember as well that the excellence of the design of our educational system founded and centered on our biblical philosophy of learning produces not only excellent academics, but excellent God-glorifying character as the home and the school work together, especially during this most unusual time. Thank you for giving me a little bit of your valuable time this evening. Now let us look at the rest of our second quarter the changes that will take place, as well as some updates on the projects of our very creative and very hardworking student council officers. Good day. My name is Julia Nung, the president of the student council, and joining me is Ms. Yana Mulyari, the vice president. Together, we will be giving updates regarding student council initiatives and projects. This school year so far has been quite the journey for PCSD, and we here at the student council have been working extra hard to make it a great one for everybody. Our most recent project this year, and one of our biggest ones as well, is clubs. Of the students, by the students, for the students. 
Right now, we have five clubs. First, the Junior Caesars, a strategy games club headed by Juan Carlos Salau. Next, Dance Row, a dance club headed by DJ Garcia. Third, Gaming Club, an online gaming club headed by David Borsi. Fourth, PCST Arts Club, an arts club headed by Sophie Rocket. And last but not the least, Healthy, a health and wellness club headed by Yana Malyari. The online educational system presents many challenges for students. Partnering with the PCSD teachers, we are here to provide some assistance. For tutoring, certain subjects require additional guidance, which is why after-school tutoring will now be in session. Please contact your child's supervisor for further inquiries and scheduling. The rates for this will vary. For class extension, class extension for goal completion and scoring will also be available for students who wish to catch up on their requirements. The rates will be 100 pesos per hour. For peer tutoring, in order to provide academic assistance while fostering student relations, selected students have been chosen to tutor their peers in their own time. No rates apply. Times like these call for more open ears and open hands. So in light of the recent events in our country, we've planned to facilitate an all-year-round donation drive. Stay tuned for more updates. But wait, there's more. We have a lot more upcoming projects in store for everyone, and we look forward to all that we'll do with you this school year. So follow our socials and stay tuned for announcements. Keep an eye out as well for teaser drops. We'd love to talk to you, so feel free to contact us on our socials for any questions or suggestions. We hope to see you soon. A big thank you to all our teachers, parents, and fellow students for all that you've done so far this year. It really is a blessing to be your student council this school year, and we look forward to serving you to the best we can do. See you soon! Sound test 1, 2, 3. There you have it, and as we conclude, thank you once again. On behalf of all of the PCSD staff, thank you parents for continuing to partner with us. And uh, the results are, uh, it shows that we have been successful as partners. So congratulations to all of you and uh, to the hard work of all of the staff and all of the students. God bless us all. Have a great evening and a great weekend. Bye.